Have you ever zoomed in on one of your images or made a large print of it and noticed halos along edges that look like this? It's a common issue, so in this video, I'll show you a way to deal with it. A goal that I have for my image developing is that I want it to be not obvious or distracting. Paying attention to the small details can make the difference between a good image and a great one. One thing that sticks out like a sore thumb to me are thin edge halos. I cover how to deal with this issue in more detail in my course called Sean's Favorite Photoshop Techniques Volume 2, so you can check that out if you want to go deeper into it. The first defense is not creating edge problems in the first place. This type of issue can be caused in a number of ways. One is from exposure blending or replacing a sky. It happens if your mask doesn't line up correctly with the skyline, the exposures don't line up due to camera shift, or the edges are overexposed in the lighter exposure so they no longer match the actual skyline. The first issue can be avoided by making a better mask. The second issue can be avoided by getting the exposures in alignment first. There isn't really a way to avoid the third situation, so that just needs to be fixed later. Another cause of this type of edge halo can be using aggressive highlight and shadow recovery in Lightroom or Camera Raw, particularly the highlight recoveries. It's tempting to pull the highlight slider all the way to the left and the shadow slider all the way to the right to try to squeeze everything you can out of the dynamic range in the raw file, but it can cause a thin edge halo to form. It might be faint at first, but it'll become more pronounced with additional raw adjustments such as clarity and contrast, and also with many Photoshop adjustments you'll do. So you can avoid this by not making such drastic highlight and shadow adjustments, particularly the highlight adjustments. Instead, you might need to blend multiple exposures, or at least blend a double process single exposure with one copy adjusted for the highlights and the other adjusted for the shadows using the exposure slider instead of highlights and shadows. But let's say that however it got there, it's too late to avoid the problem and we just need to fix it. I'm gonna call it darker color clone stamping. Here's how you do it. So in Photoshop, the first thing you wanna do is zoom in on the image to at least 100% or maybe even 200% so you can really see that little fine light edge that just doesn't look good. And if you made a big print, that's what it would look like. Now, you can do this directly to the background layer if you don't have a lot of luminosity mask or highly detailed mask adjustments above it. Or you can do it directly to a copy you made of the background layer. Or if you do have a bunch of layers with intricate mass and luminosity mass, then you may need to make a merge stamp layer at the top of the layer stack and do the cloning there. Now, the next step is to grab the clone stamp tool and you're gonna make sure it's set to current layer. And you're also gonna set the blending mode of the clone stamp tool to darker color. This tells the clone stamp to fill in the light edge color with a darker color of your choosing. As long as the darker color isn't darker than the dark side of the edge, only the light edge will be cloned. So you just want to select a very small soft edge brush. The brush just needs to be a little bit wider than the halo itself. So then you want to sample just near the halo in a color that is the same brightness as where you want to fill in with. And then you just paint and allow that sampled color to fill that halo in. And as you can see, it fills the halo in and doesn't overlap into the landscape at all, thanks to that darker color blending mode. And we can keep moving along all the way down the edge. And you resample whenever you need to select from a different place. And you just keep going and resampling and finding the right color to fill in and eventually you can get to a place where you've totally fixed the edge all the way along. Right there, I just made a mistake, so I'm going to back up and then I'm gonna resample, line up that dark area and keep going. Resample there too. So those are the kinds of things you wanna look for. All right. Now let's see how it looks. 
you can see that's just done an excellent job of removing that edge halo. And it takes a while if you have a lot of edges like this image does, but eventually you get to a place where you've moved all those halos and your final image will just look so much better. So there are situations that this just doesn't work well. For example, if the halo is enough lighter than the land and sky around it. If it's not working, I move on to one of my other approaches that I cover in my favorite techniques volume two course that I talked about. So to recap, first, take steps to avoid creating this type of edge halo in the first place if you can. And if it can't be avoided, or if they're already there, you select the clone stamp tool in Photoshop, set it to sample current layer, and set the blending mode to darker color. And then you just clone on the background layer or on a merge layer at the top of the layer stack. And when you're all done, don't forget to go back and set your clone stamp tool back to normal. So the next time you use it, it works how you want it to. So I hope that tip is helpful. That's all for now. Thanks as always for tuning in. And of course, I'll see you again the next time.